know what the strange thing is? You know how they always say, oh, you know, you should wear that while you're young. But I'm almost 40, I'm 38, going to 39 next year. And I've never felt younger and hotter and more confident in my life. Okay. I love it. Every girl needs a good little black dress that they absolutely love. And this is it for me. I actually don't have one that I love. This is a dress I wore to the Acne Show. It was a good look. Some people didn't like it, but I loved it. So I'm gonna be doing some fall shopping today. I'm gonna find some really cute hot girl looks. And you know what I've also realized is that when I say hot girl, I think a lot of people are like, oh, she's talking about wearing nothing, like being naked, having these slutty outfits on. No, when I'm talking about hot girl, I'm talking about fire. Fire and that confidence. Fire that just exudes when you walk in the door. People are like, ooh, who is she? And it doesn't have, you could be fully clothed from head to toe. And people are like, damn, that girl is hot, right? Oh, this is sexy. They're very sexy. Like, I love this look. Oh. For me, my thought process is if I'm gonna spend money, how often am I gonna wear this piece? I don't care if I have to spend more for things that I could wear over and over, season after season. And if I even wear it every day during the week, like, it doesn't matter, right? So I tend to buy more of the classic pieces. These are the Kylie Jenner glasses that she wore to the show. People already say that I look like an alien. I feel like they're really cool, but they're also so ugly. Here's the thing about me. I know as an influencer, I'm very, very lucky that I get gifted and I get to try on things. Maybe I don't get to keep them like the samples that I was fashion week, but it allows me to kind of get that fantasy out of the way of like having these expensive pieces. So I never really want to spend that much money on clothes because of my job and the perks that I get with it. So it's very, very, very rare when I actually go out and shop and buy the things that I want. And I'm totally trying to justify everything I'm about to buy today. But I think it's important that I go out there and shop and spend the money on things that I think I would want to spend the money on versus always just like pimping out like free things that I'm getting. Because the question is like, what would I actually spend my money on, right? My boyfriend, he's been in the fashion industry for way longer than I have, and he's just so well respected in the industry, and I really value his thoughts and his opinions on fashion. And, um, you know, I just love getting into his thought process of, you know, specific items and how it's made, and what the references were and you know that's something that I've never experienced before so I love going shopping with them it's one of my favorite things to I do think yeah it reminds me of a 60s era which I think is really cool 60s is it the neckline or the the length, oh, the length uh, the mini. our body gone um, but there's a modernity into it as well I do I'm obsessed with the back like I love how it looks yes like a little so skirt that it's almost like a you know a 60s jeans yeah but the front is is very traditional so you have a uh, yeah yeah I think you have a really good design and there's a little bit of stretch as well no? and like I, a, it's like one of those things that I'll wear a lot like yeah. I'll, I'll wear this a lot okay. I mean you just don't think about it and just play with shoes yeah when you have like that throw up and it's like it goes up to here oh, you're like, yeah. and then all of a sudden I was like oh it's coming and then I was trying to hold it and then I was like okay it's gonna go down it's gonna go down and then it came up again oh, but it like I tasted it you know when it comes up so high like, kind of <laughs> I mean for me I always have to take pills with food yeah. or else I get nauseous yeah. but I didn't and so then like I was like I think I need to pull up so I pulled over and he opened all the doors and I was like on Wanting. the ground I was like did you get it Today? Out? No, I didn't even get it yeah, out. This morning. This morning. Are you gonna throw up at all? No. Oh, well, you man. spat a couple of things. I spat. I spat things out. <laughs> but it didn't fully come out. I've been on the 
internet, creating content for almost 20 years now. You know, in the beginning, it's all exciting, obviously. And I have, to, I just have like endless ideas, but it's designed to like kind of burn you out, really. Like I feel like being on the internet naturally burns you out. I don't know one person that has been on the internet creating content for a living that hasn't burnt out. And for me, it's really about like now wanting to live my life for me and not for other people. And I know that that kind of goes against with what I do for a living because any even personal moment was a moment to get content. Yeah, of course. That's how you and you trained your brain to think that yeah. way. Yeah. We want to actually take a photo in the elevator. The someone was in it. So now we have to wait to actually shoot. The life of an influencer. Fun. Even everyday people that like are not content creators, they like literally live through their phones. Like they go on vacations to like get pretty photos. Like, but you just realize that like people actually now live their life to get content. Not when, to enjoy it. Not to experience. actually enjoy it. And I know that's not like new news or breaking news. For me, I'm just like, I don't want to live like that anymore because I, I do that so much for a living. Um, Sorry, girl. Can't give up now. <laughs> You're into time. deep. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thanks, guys. The funniest comments I get now is, oh my god, you own Fleur. And my answer is, yeah, does that surprise you? <laughs> I guess it does surprise a lot of people because Fleur has grown so far beyond me as a person, which is a dream come true. But anyways, this is the office. This is where I come in, brainstorm with the team. We create this, we don't create the actual scents here. Obviously that's in the labs. We ideate the scents here. We go back and forth on what we think the next scent should smell like. We come up with the names here. We, we, get, we get all the creative shit done here. And it's my absolute favorite thing about my job. And seeing them all lined up like this makes my heart so happy. These are all of our EDPs, which are probably our most popular, what we're known for. And we've launched so many scents. We're launching a new one, which I'm not gonna show you yet. It's our last scent of the year. It is a moody line, and I think most people, especially women, can relate to that. We just have different moods, and you can find your mood in one of our scents. So let's go. I'll give you guys a tour now. Okay, so, well, welcome to my office. I know what the after, but we have a very fancy office. Welcome. So, a lot of creativity happens out here. This is the Fleur Closet. So we have candles up here, body mist, EDPs, full size, travel size, body wash, body lotion. We got all the fun goods here. So we kind of mood board everything out. This was from our latest campaign. We also try to make it not so like serious. We want it to feel like kind of casual and cool. Yeah, it's more of a vibe versus like the obvious fragrance typical ad that you usually see. Yeah, it's never it's never too late to change paths. It's never too late to start something new. It's never too late to get into something that you don't know fuck all about, like you don't know anything about. Because truth be told, I think I had a really big imposter syndrome of getting into the fragrance world because I just didn't have a background in scents and fragrance. But it's been the most gratifying thing. And I think there's always a link between doing something that you're afraid of and the outcome of that. Yeah, of course, like we all wanna make money, right? But that's not a big enough valid reason to continue to do something. I mean, why do something for money when you're depressed? Like there's really no point, right? So you gotta find something that you love, that you're challenged by, and that you have a lot of fun with. 